I bow to all the seekers of truth. As Dr. Reeve had has told you, you have to become something. What do we have to become? We are born as human beings and we take it for granted that we are human beings. We have to ask the question to ourselves, why are we human beings? What is the purpose of our life? Is it that the whole evolution is purposeless? That there is no divine play in it? Then why it was done with such care and why we have become human beings? So first, we have to come to right conclusions, that is the counselling you can call it. We have come, we have to understand that we have not become what we are supposed to be. That's why we are in confusion. We do not have answers for this, fundamental questions. Some believe in God, some don't believe in God. Some believe in Christ, some believe in Muhammad, some believe in Krishna, some say that it's all science. We are so confused and there is no answer to it. The reason is we are not that what we have to be. Supposing an instrument is given to you, and you don't know anything about that, then you don't know what is the purpose of that instrument and for which it was created and to what use it has to be put. Thus there's a confusion and the confusion is to such an extent that in that confusion we have formed firm ideas, mental projections. artificial, without any biological basis for it. There is no biological basis for our mental projections. Just sit down here and think now that, see, this kind of a government if you make, then people will be all right. This is your own mental projection. It has nothing living behind it. It's all dead thought. By changing the governments, have you been able to transform the people? I've been to Russia, I've been to China, I've been to America, to all these places. Human beings are just the same, there is no difference whatsoever. Maybe some are more honest, some are more dishonest, some are more moral, some are less moral, but on the balance if you see you find any kind of person everywhere. So one has to understand that this kind of mental projection that we were having about other things like social work, people think that being social work and all that our ego can be conquered. The greatest egoistical people are the social workers. Now these mental projections have created also lots of norms for us, like I sit down here and decide I'll give a title to someone. Now he becomes a title holder. Then he's off, finished. Once for all, he's dead now to anything that is reality. Because he's re living with something so unreal, which was given to him by somebody which is so unreal. There's nothing living force behind it. Have you seen any man changing by getting some sort of a title, or lot of money. On the contrary, he becomes worse. 
never improves. So what is the reason? Why is it that when we go into an enterprise of this kind, why is it we find that everything fails? You talk of democracy, it becomes demonocracy. You talk of communism, you find it is another headache. You talk of anything, it all becomes such a funny thing and it recoils back. Whatever you try, any enterprise, it recoils back. Science, what is science now has become nothing but atomic war. How is it science gone into the atomic war? No one knows, but suddenly it has become a great threat to the whole world. Computers, tomorrow computer will uh, start uh, dominating us. We see those things clearly happening to us. And we are worried, we are shocked. Well, we don't know why is it, whatever we try to do, why it recoils on us and entangles us and enslaves us. The reason is it's, it has no living force behind it. It's only mental, at mental level, and human beings live only on mental level. So there has to be another higher level which is generated when you get in contact with a living force. Now let us see what is the living force. The living force is that which sprouts the seed, the mother sprouts the seed. If you see the mother earth as it is, you don't find anything in it, nothing. There's just clay, but you put some seed and that wasteful thing that you think of no use, this mud, that gives that life to the seed. And you find that the flowers become fruit automatically. It's a wondrous world if you start looking at the living world of the living force. Because we are not in connection with that, whatever we do, we go into problems. But the nature does not. While we do, the reason is we have lost our biological sustainers or process. We are not biologically acting, it's all dead action. What we do is all dead. For example, as I told you before also, that something is dead, a tree is dead, and you make a chair, then you think, I have made this. From dead to dead to dead to dead. And this dead sits on our head. You make a chair, you cannot sit on the ground. Then we start another thing like anti-culture business. That also just the same. Like pendulum move, we may move. Now we don't like democracy to have communism. From communism to democracy, democracy to come. There's no movement. Now what is the biological movement? Within us, as you know, there are peptides in our body. And the biological movement of peptides is shown when the movement is spiral. When it is spiral, then it is biological. And when it is linear, then it is said that they have lost their biological sustainer. They have no biological quality. They have become lean. So that sustainers within us, that spiral movement within us, is existing in our nerves, but can become absolutely linear, leading to death. All our mental projections are linear because we cannot with that, in our own awareness, in our own awareness, jump higher. It is so outside. For a man might say, think, oh, I must try to improve the whole world, I must do this thing. There was a gentleman I met who is in charge of the peace of the world. And the most disturbed personality I have ever come across. He was jumping this way, he was jumping this way, every sort of disturbance was in his mind. And he's supposed to be in charge of the peace of the world, imagine. Now what's the matter with the gentleman? Though he thinks of peace, he thinks of such big things, he talks of higher ideals, everything. What, what is it inside? There is nothing, no peace. He's just talking outside. What is the reason? 
The reason is, it's all only linear. He has accepted that he is in charge of the peace, he must talk of big things, he must talk of ideal things, and then the whole thing drops off. We had League of Nations, now we have United Nations, all flops. So to make it spirally activated, what have we to do? First of all, we have to come to the right conclusion, understanding that whatever we have done so far has been linear in its action. It's not biological. We cannot transform a flower into a fruit. No living action we can take. We cannot perform any living action. Once we understand that, then we have to know that we have to become more, to be in connection with that living force, that all-pervading force. And to get to that all-pervading force, what have we to do? Actually, what did we do to become human beings? Nothing. We just became spontaneously surge, surge. Spontaneous. It was just some force within us which worked it out. That made us human beings. We didn't do anything. So one has to understand that if it is a living process, then you don't have to do anything about it. It is effortless. This is very difficult for human beings to understand. It is very difficult because they live with their ego and they cannot accept that you cannot do it yourself. They think we can do it ourselves. It is not possible. It cannot be done. You have to go to the Mother Earth to ask the seed to be sprouted. You cannot sprout it. You may try to dissect it, analyze it, put it under microscope, but you cannot sprout it. For sprouting, you have to surrender yourself to that Mother Earth who does the job. To begin with, we have to understand that we are not capable of doing any living work whatsoever. Once we have that humility within us, then we start seeing what can happen to us by which we can become the masters of that living force. To, be, to become something, you have not done anything. And to become higher, you don't have to do anything. That means there is built in within you the complete mechanism which is going to work it out. Now before you, I would say it's like the hypothesis for you, and you have to understand it as a scientist would understand, with an open mind. Because this is the science of the divine. It's not known so far. This is the knowledge of the roots. Not known to anyone so far, I can say. But to known to some people who have evolved themselves. They have gone above that state that is just mental. And these are the very few people who know what it is. This knowledge is not of today, is of thousands of years, but is not the knowledge of the tree, as I told you, which we have, but is the knowledge of the roots which we have to understand. The knowledge of the roots is that within you is placed the root, is called, is it here? No. Ah. Somebody can come up. Please. <coughs> Here, in the triangular bone, is placed the thing called Kundalini. It is a Sanskrit word. One should not be so frightened of Sanskrit. I was surprised when I went to America. The first question they asked me, why should you come and teach us about these things which were in your country? I said, to me, it is just the same whether it is America or India. Why did you come to India to teach us about science? Why this kind of an attitude people have? Wherever there is knowledge, a humble person must go and seek. This was discovered about 14,000 years back, where in England, I don't think people lived here in this country. So why should anybody feel 
humiliating. When you think you are English or you are American, you are wrong. You are a human being. God never made a world like that. We are all one and everybody has to support each other. Like a flower thinks I am a flower, a leaf thinks I am a leaf, and the roots think they are roots, then how the, how the whole tree is going to manifest this thing? We are one. There is nothing uh, that you are the tree and you are the leaf and you are the flower and we are everything. So to think like that, if that is another mental projection we have, that I am this and I am that. You are just a human being which has been created by God's grace to this level as the most beautiful thing, the epitome of His creation. I would say that in the West there are more seekers perhaps than we have in the East perhaps. But that doesn't mean that it is only because it is England or America, but it is only that all over the world God has this blessing and the message for everyone. So first of all we must understand that this is the knowledge of the roots and this knowledge of the roots, unless and until we know about it, we have no right to criticize. Moreover, by criticizing you are not the gainer, you are the loser. So with complete openness of a student, we have to see to this, that this great force is placed within us uh, in a triangular board, whether you are an Australian, American, English, Indian or coming from Timbuktu. All of you, if you are human beings, God has placed this force within you. He doesn't understand these differences actually. It's only we do understand. For Him it's the one world, that beautiful world He has created and all the human beings are His children. So in this triangular board is placed this beautiful thing called the Kundalini. And this Kundalini is the motherhood within. It's a quality. It has nothing to do with a woman or a man. It's a quality, it's a, it's a type, a personality. For example, I would say today Mahatma Gandhi people accept him as a great man because he had the quality of compassion. He had the quality of giving, of nourishing. In the same way, all the saints of the world had this quality. They were mother, full of compassion, love. Christ had the same. He was so full of compassion that you cannot call him uh, in the uh, worldly way a man, because man means he must hit, he must aggress, he must uh, do all kinds of things to show his ego. No, he was a personality who had compassion, who had nourishment. Now to become that personality, what have we to do? Again say nothing because it is all placed within you. The expression of Kundalini within you is the expression of that great personality. When that happens to you, you yourself become like the mother of that you can give. You can project yourself, that you become compassion yourself and your compassion acts. These days Kali Yuga in the modern times what was the Kali Yuga, the days of confusion is over and it's called as Krita Yuga, means where this living force will act and this living force has to act through you. You become the medium of that living force, actually you become the master of it. But the beauty of this is that it manifests within you also. For example, the electricity is flowing through this, it doesn't do anything to this instrument. But when this force starts flowing through you, you get completely transformed into a new personality. And a personality that Christ has described that you are to be born again. Again, linear way is that artificially people can brand themselves born again. But when it happens to you, you are completely transformed from within. And the transformation is so visible. And so active as Krita Yuga has started that you are amazed, you cannot believe it is fantastic. 
because you are fantastically made, extremely fantastically made, and that all thing starts expressing itself as soon as it manifests. So a human being should know that he is made with great care, great love, and for a very great thing is to enjoy the love of his father. <coughs> when this Kudalini rises within you, passes through six chakras. The seventh it does not pass. The seventh is the guard. Then it creates that spiral movement within our awareness. The awareness itself gets spirally formed. And instead of moving in a pendulum, you move in such a way that you jump higher. Your awareness becomes higher than what it is today. So the human awareness becomes higher. There are lots of misunderstandings about this. And it comes from the ignorance. Because when you start seeking something from ignorance, what happens? That whatever you find is a partial truth or could be something not the truth. For example, in the darkness you might see this and think it's a snake. A wire might look like a snake. But supposing you suddenly become enlightened, of course in the beginning light may not be that strong. In some people it could be a little bit, just a flick. But you start seeing that. And gradually if the light improves and the lantern improves, I can say, then you start seeing it very clearly what has gone wrong with you and you start correcting it. Now the new awareness that comes into you is not something that can be just certified that, all right, now you are realized souls have a brand and go ahead. It is not that way, but you become conscious of that awareness because for the first time when the Kundalini pierces through this spontaneal bone area, then you feel the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost coming. In the Sanskrit language, Holy Ghost is called as Adisha. More surprising is that, I don't know why, but oh, in the Bible, Holy Ghost was not discussed much. Adi Shakti is the Holy Ghost. And about Adi Shakti, if you have to learn, you have to go to Indian scriptures. Even in the Old Testament, they say Jews know about it. Now, this power, which is the all pervading power of God, the power of His love, becomes evident because you start feeling it on your fingers. And as you say in the English language, you know on your fingertips, your hands start speaking. You can feel another personality, you can put the hand towards another person, and you can see what are the centers catching because they are shown on these five, six, and seven on the right five, six and seven on the left. This is the emotional side and the right is the physical and the mental side. Now the doctors cannot deal with the psychosomatic or psychological things and it's a very big problem because there is only analysis going on. Now for a doctor it is important to know both the sides of human beings or I would say the three sides, the physical, the mental and the emotional. But it is not so, he just knows part of it, while a psychologist knows the part of it. And that's how we cannot find out the reason for the problems that exist within us. But when this Kundalini rises, she passes through these six centers, which are the milestones of our evolution, and thus integrates you completely. So the first thing you receive is the integration. By that integration you are amazed that physically you get cured. There has been a criticism about us in the newspaper that we have started curing people. Thank God we are not in America, there we would have been arrested because the doctors there do not allow anybody to cure anyone. But we do not cure, automatically it happens. When the Kundalini will rise, automatically it will happen that you are whole being itself. 
will become integrated by which you will be healed. You will heal yourself, nobody else is going to heal. I don't under law if you can charge a person if he heals himself. But this will exactly happen that you will heal yourself and you will know how to heal yourself. But this is nothing, it's not only the physical side of it that happens to you, it's just the minimum of minimum. But those people who are suffering from mental trouble also get healed. The third side of it is that physically you are all right, mentally you are all right and emotionally also you are all right. Now there's a very big confusion about mental and emotional in English language. So if you have to say mental as the brain is concerned, then they mean to say that person who is mad is a mental case. Actually he is a heart case because he is working with his heart. He weeps, cries, but his go med head goes off, it's the balance. When he is working with his head too much, his heart goes off. That's another balance of the nature. So if you have even the problem, if you think too much, some people are so mad that they go on thinking, like mad, they cannot stop their thinking. They think, 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 and their thinking maddens them, but they cannot stop. So here, when the Kundalini rises onto this point, you become thoughtlessly aware. You don't have to think, you can stop your thoughts. If you want to think, you can think. If you want to stop, you can stop. It is not necessary for you to think. And that's exactly what happens when the Kundalini rises here, that mentally you become absolutely comforted. Now this business, of raising the Kundalini is a business of God and which cannot be sold. You cannot have a business on the human level, you cannot sell it. You just cannot do it. How it happens is automatically, by the grace of God, it works. You cannot sell anything that is the grace of God. What is the value of that? On this point only many people discard Sahaja Yoga because they think that it cannot be sold, so it must be useless. It is so invaluable that you cannot pay for it. Now the rising of the Kundalini has to take place first of all. But with these three advantages, the fourth advantage is the highest, that you become the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who is the master in it. So you become your own master, you become your own guru. Nobody has to tell you, do this or do that, you are guided. Because as soon as the Kundalini rises, you start feeling the full breeze in your hands. And these are giving you a new vibrations, a new dimension by which you know whether to do this or not. For example, you want to do something, you want to buy a book. You don't have to decide about it. As soon as you go near the book, either it will give you a cool breeze or it may make you hot or may a little bit burn also if it's a hot one. And you don't want to have that at any cost, you want to have the cool breeze because you enjoy it. So you just give up. You just give up things without anybody telling you because your vibration says, the spirit that is now shining your attention tells you and you start understanding that now I have become my own Guru, because your Guru is sitting inside you as a Spirit. It has not yet manifested in your attention and that's why you are worried. But just it manifests. And once it manifests, you are amazed that you yourself, you have become a Guru of yourself. You don't need anybody else to tell you, but you can do it yourself. You can find out yourself. Nobody has to give any explanation or correction or anything, you just start improving yourself, automatically it works. A little bit if you know how to decode it and how to work it out, your problems, you just manage it. You become yourself a guru. That's the thing you have to do. 
Of course, I told you, you cannot pay for it. It's an insult even to think that you can pay for it. Nobody can understand it, that this is complete benevolence, is complete. It's not mercenary act of benevolence, but it is a complete, absolute benevolence. And for this benevolence, you cannot pay as soon as you pay for it, it is no more a benevolence. And that's why you cannot pay for it, you cannot work it out, it has to just work out. Now, especially in the West there is a problem with people that they think, why should mother do it? I tell you, it's a thankless job. You cannot do it. If you can do it, I'll be happy to retire. But you cannot. That's the point. This is my job, what am I to do? Supposing I am that, what am I to do now? If I have to do it, if I am supposed to do it, then what should I do? I mean, supposing you are posted as something, you are a policeman, you have to do the policeman's job. Now, how can you challenge it? He has to do it. As if you can say, I am paid for it, or you can say that, this is my job, this I have to do. Though I know it is very, very troublesome. To get it done is not easy. It's not very easy. Everyone may not get realization. I cannot guarantee. I cannot say that you all will get the realization. It's a very difficult thing. Some people will just miss it for some time. There's nothing to be worried about. It, it has to be corrected. It has to be redeemed, as they say. The Kundalini has to be brought up. If there are centers catching, they have to be cleared out. They have to be brought up. and. We have to have complete understanding and compassion about ourselves and love for ourselves and respect for ourselves, that if we have to become the life, then we have to adjust and cooperate. Now the thing is that the ego part of it is the strongest enemy of realization. I, I like it, I am this, I am that. When you say Apai, it is not yourself, your spirit, but it is your ego that says that. When you become the spirit, you don't say I, what you say? It. You talk in the third person. You say, it is not coming up, it is not working out, it is not, in a third way. You never say, I will raise the Kundalini. What you will say? The Kundalini is not coming. The Kundalini is not there. In a third person you start talking, so that you do not take any credit or discredit for it. Now it is for you to observe and see for yourself. It depends on your power of observation. Whatever Dr. Reeves may tell you or anything, you don't have to believe those, because it depends on your own observation and sense of penetration. Like I would say, <coughs> I went to the Union Society and the chairman of the Union Society was an 82-year-old man and he got his realization. And I told about Hume's mistake, why he missed the point, which they understood very well. But then he got up very humbly and he says, Mother, now you have learnt our language, let us talk your language, let us learn your language. And then at the second meeting he says, now I have observed one thing, it's not a question but my observation, if it is true that you don't believe in time, there's no time, just to give it like that. That depends on your own observation. But I would not like to accept any ideas about me because I know it is terrible. Sometimes it can act against, I mean some people may just leave, you know, they can't bear it anymore. So that's not the point. You have to see for yourself, observe yourself. There's nothing to gain from you at all for you. cannot give me whatever you want. There's nothing to ask for. It is you who have to take something from me, which you better have. I'm like a cashier on the bank, see? You have got your check. Now, I have nothing to get from you. The cashier is paid for, all right, that's one point, is different, from the employer, but not by you. And what I have to do is to check, take your checks and cash it. Now, when you are in that position, Will you be angry with me for that? Will you say to your cashier, why are you doing this to me? Why should I take money from you? If that is intelligible, then we can see 
there is some meeting point between us and we can talk of realization there in a way that it has to be done. You all have to have your key, your spirit that is within you. Perhaps I know that better than you. You know many things better than me. I don't know even how to use a plastic bag, but I know how to open the Kundalini. I am so hopelessly bad at so many things which are so trivial and simple, which you can do just like that, I cannot do it. So it's all right. So I am also quite humble about it. I don't mind. I don't know many things, but I know one thing is that you are the Spirit and you have to become the Spirit through the awakening of your Buddha. This is what a mother can do, is to explain to you that come to the right country, that you have to have it, it is within you and you have to get it. But I cannot force it on you. I cannot make you take it or else if you do not want to have it, I just can't do it. It's impossible. There's no hypnosis in it. It's a happening that has to take place with complete understanding of your freedom. I hope you will understand this new method that if you have to go to the roots, you have to become subtler than what you are and to become that subtler being, you have to become the spirit. Your Kundalini has to be awakened. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask me and there is no need to be aggressive with me because I have not come here to take anything from you. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can ask me. One thing I must tell you, if you are going to some other guru or something, because I have seen also these people are going to other gurus and I think these gurus feel threatened because I don't take any money and they feel threatened about it, whatever it is. If you are adjusted with any guru or still attached to someone, you may go away. Because I, I am not here uh, to quarrel with you for that. You can go away, it's, it's all your free choice. But if you want to become the Spirit, if you want to have a Realization, you are welcome. I will be very happy to work it out. Now let me have some questions if you have. Yes. Okay. What happens to your self-realization when the body dies? What happens to your Kundalini and spirit? That is again futuristic. You be in the present, my child, all right? Now this is a very futuristic question. Now you are not going to die, I can assure you, for some time. So we'll do it later on. Because why should you worry about your death just now? We are, I'm talking of eternal life. Let's take it. Be in the present, all right? It's a good question. But why should you worry about death? Huh? Just mother's given you the answer. I've given you Let's the answer. This is not the time to talk about it. It requires a complete lecture. All right? I'll tell you later on. You, I'll write to you. You give me your address, I'll write to you. Next question, please. Now don't take other time because I'm not interested. Now. Don't be interested what happens to your death and what happens. Uh, that is not to be seen just now. Just now you get your realization the first day. That's why Buddha did not talk of God even because he thought he talks of God, then people ask, what is God? Where is He? But can I see Him? Can I meet Him? So he said, all right, just take your self-realization, finish. Nothing more than that. No, 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 please sit down. You are from some other group, I think. Do you belong to some other group? I know, I know that. No, please sit down. We don't want you here. Please sit down. Now, this is not the way to behave. We don't go to your group. Why don't you take your own hall and give a lecture there? If you belong to another group, you don't come here. These people have been always troubling us like this. This is too much. Why are you troubling us? For what have we done to you? Why do you come here and trouble us? No, that's not good. That's not being kind and civil. You better learn these things, first of all. Please sit down. Please sit down. This is not the way to behave. To go to somebody's group said, you see, I don't go to these people. I don't talk about these people. Why should you go to other people? So go and learn from your guru and become whatever you want to become. It's all right. I have already told you, you shouldn't trouble somebody like this all the time. It's not good. That's why realization is needed. Then you will understand how to be gentle. They give big ideas. You become moksha, you become peace, you have become peace, and you, you go with those ideas. 
You don't even have vibrations to feel what you are, what your guru is. You don't have any understanding, no discretion, nothing. You go to a guru, he says, all right, now you, you are going to go beyond everything. You believe it. This is all ego pampering. If you want to live with it, go ahead. You That's believe into whatever you believe it in your own way. But whatever you believe has n not done no good to anybody. Has it done any good to anyone? You may believe into anything, so what? It's not important. What have you done so far? What good have you done to anyone so far? What's he saying? Let's leave it, please. No, don't do like that. It's not Next good. Question. It's not civil. No, 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 no. You better join some politics. You'll be better there. You are not meant for spiritual life. You go into some politics. You'll be better off. Now, let us have some other questions. If there are no questions, these are those stupid new people, people wasting their time, I tell you. Really. Wasting their time, wasting our time. Done no good to anyone. Hmm. Yes. If I was actually fearing self realization, would it in any way interfere with my normal functioning thereafter? Huh? If he gets self realization, will it interfere in any way with his normal functioning? No, no, you will be very normal. <laughs> you become extremely normal. You become so normal that you are amazed at yourself. You see, all abnormalities drop off, first of all. And secondly, you become so dynamic, absolutely dynamic. We have people here who couldn't do any jobs, they were depressed, this, that. But apart from that, when they started doing jobs, they were surprised. The students who could not pass their exams to first in the class, uh, they had the highest marks. Uh, the uh, people who could not uh, concentrate uh, became uh, well-known artists, well-known uh, uh, architects. We have so many Indian artists in India, especially, who are very well-known artists, but uh, they had fallen uh, prey to, uh, say, alcohol or something. They have become great artists, and now when they sing, you see, it's so melodious. They themselves now feel it that way. And uh, on my birthday they came to sing uh, because they said, Mother, you have given us this new dimension in our music. You become extremely creative and very dynamic and you are not tired because you get connected with the whole. Yes. I'm a doctor. 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 I'm not so sure that they give it up quite a few ailments that they have. The spade in the left side, the chest, the angina, and all sorts. Angina is. I met a person who had shown my sensitization and a really interesting person. Thank you. I would like to know more about how the sensitization gets them rid of their ailments. I know some of the ailments are connected. More with psychology, psychiatry, mental illness, but there are some which are not, such as chronic inflammatory or new growth cancers. Do you think, Mother, that they are also connected with those who have that kind of disease? Yes, Doctor, I'm sorry to say it is so. It's so many diseases can be cured, so many. I would not say all I would cover. Like supposing you have a cutter, cataract in the eye, and we cannot cure that, we have seen that and also things where something is dead in the body, then you have to remove it, you see, and uh, things like that. But I think if it is not in a very galloping state, if it is uh, still there and if you do not interfere too much with it uh, and do proper med uh, meditation the way it is to be done, you see, these are only permutations and combinations of these centers that we get into trouble. If you are in the center, you see, if you are in the center, I mean, uh, no less than Guru Nanak himself has talked about it, absolutely. And this is what work he has done. I am doing his work. Only only thing is that today is the time for it to give you the proof of what he said. So if these centers are kept normal and if the Kundalini starts flowing properly, then what happens is that you get connected with that all-pervading power, which is the life force itself. It's not only prana. It's not only the right-sided thing which we call the prana, the white uh, thing is, but also the emotional and also the evolutionary process, the sustainer thing. So it gives all the three forces within us and if you know how to manu manipulate it and manifest it, you can work it out. And for you especially I would say, 
that it is your heritage itself. So for you it should be a great uh, thing to understand. But of course the patients who are absolutely gone cases, and some patients I would say, I must admit this, like Hitler now, Hitler I won't be able to see out, I'm sorry. Because you must have some cash there also, isn't it, with God? Uh, if you ask me to cure Hitler or somebody like that, it's going to be difficult. But people are normally good people and those who are good people who lead a righteous life, not an aggressive life and are of good nature can be easily cured. Once it happened that there was one Dr. Date, he brought me a lady to be cured of her heart ailment and she was very serious and he thought he, she, she may not be all right with surgery. But I cured her, uh, but I told him that this lady will not survive, within three days she is going to die. She was so much cured that he could not believe because every heartbeat was all right, everything was all right. He was surprised, I would say, that she is going to die after three days. So he said, how do you know, mother? I said, I don't know how do I know, but I know she is going to die. Then I told him, doctor, you go and find out the history of this woman, what sort of a woman she is. So then you will know what I am saying. And he found out that she is the woman because of her, her daughter-in-law committed suicide. And the husband had become really mad an extremely aggressive woman and she has tortured all the people in the family. She had no love at all and there was no need for her to be blessed to that extent that she should get completely cured perhaps. I think her life was, that short was good and that's how she could not survive after that and she died nearly after three days. And the, Dr. Dathi was himself surprised. I told him himself that you will get a heart attack too if you don't take to Sir Yoga and he died of heart because his heart was catching, he wouldn't believe. Because he said, it's showing all right, my x-ray is all right. I said, it is not. It is such a subtle thing. Before the disease starts, you see, you cannot make out. But the disease starts at a point when it is so subtle that doctors also cannot make it out. But in Sahaja Yoga, you can. You catch on this finger. If you catch on this finger, that means there's a pressure on your heart. And if you're catching on this finger, it's better to pay attention to your heart immediately and you can. It's a very simple thing, very simple. The mantra for heart attack is, Mother, I am the spirit. That's it. Mother, I am the spirit. Ma, my atma. That's all. If you say it three times, you can get rid of it. But this mantra has to be said. Every deep Tom and Harry cannot give you the mantra. Any person who is a realized soul can only give you this. That is very important. And Nanak Sabi himself always talks about Sat Guru. You see, because he found out that people used to talk about Guru, like Swami Ramdas and all those talk of Guru. But then he thought, that is better to call Sadguru and Guru as two things. Sadguru is the one who has got realized. And the one who calls himself as a Guru without realizing, talks big, I, you, I'll give you this and I'll give you that, and just makes a big organization out of that, is not a Guru. So that is what it is. A person has to be a realized soul and he must know all the details about how to do it. Now, as if you are interested, I would like to meet some of you doctors here and I'll tell you all about it in details and I can make you master in no time. There's no problem on it. But a Sahaja Yogi is a person who knows all about Kundalini. He knows how to deal with it, how to work it out. Now he himself is a doctor and he has cured many people with Sahaja Yoga. And it's very simple thing and we can work out. Thank God this country is a free country in this respect and that they have asked us to write to them about this method of Sahaja Yoga, how to cure people. But that's just the basics. That's not so important. What is important is to become the spirit. We, we look forward and we are very thankful to these two doctors, my other friends, can have your audience sometime. Right? Yes, by all means, why not? I would love to have you for tea at my residence. You give your name and address and I'll, I'll let you know. Right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Yes. Any more? Yes. What is it? Sorry, could you say again? Ah. And you're asking, will it help? His yes. son has been very depressed. Where do you live? In what part? All right. It's not difficult. We have a center here. <coughs> so, medi medication doesn't help. Is that what you're saying? No medication is required at the moment, but they as parents are very worried about him. No, I know. Depression is also to be understood in its full, full extent, how people get depressed, you see, and how people 
get into problems or depression. It's very simple and it can be cured. He can be cured. We have people here who were very depressed and now today they have become dynamic people, so it's all right. You can, uh, you can go to the center, you take the address of the center and uh, you, you take the photograph and they uh, will manage. You just don't worry, they'll tell you how to do it. But do it religiously. The way they are telling you, you should do It's very simple method. They will tell you, you have to have faith in yourself and you have to do it religiously. It will work out. I promise it can be worked out. Now behind you is sitting there some Mohan. He's sitting, just see that boy sitting behind you. And he had been to some guru like that who just uh, ruined his awareness completely. He was really absolutely out of mind. And now you won't believe he writes poetry so beautifully like when I read it I think of Kabir like that. He's writing poetry now. So it's something so different, you know. It's, uh, so it can happen. You just bring the, uh, you take the address and bring the photograph of the boy with his birth date and all that and give it to them, he'll work it. He's an artist. Then it's all right. He'll become a greater artist. Yes, you have a question. Uh, I have been so by twice the meditation. Then uh, I just thought, uh, I thought to be a way to in the lady to have a very uh, hard discipline or special diet or uh, uh, <coughs> something a new job discipline. Have to change. This is what I haven't thought. But uh, you know, I went to try meditation, but it wasn't so hard, and I just wondered. Uh, in the, it was not hard at all. It wasn't hard. <laughs> so, it was like a you know, yoga, you know, stop eating or stop eating that, and you know, you know. No, no, no. You see, it is sahaja samadhi dal. It is sahaja. Sahaja is another meaning, also easiest. That's the quality of your mother, I should say. Has to be easiest. Mother gives you birth, does she give you any trouble? Nothing. She takes all the trouble. So you don't have to worry. Kundalini takes all the trouble within you. You don't have to do anything. So it's very sahaj. It's absolutely sahaj. It is absolutely spontaneous. It doesn't give you trouble at all. It is absolutely easy. Easy as possible. Has to be because it is so vital. Whatever is not vital is like this, that guru says, don't eat this, don't do that, stand on your heads, do this, do that. That's not the mother's style. But the real gurus also, they are very strict, no doubt. But the real gurus give you realization, that's the first thing they do. They don't tell you that, I'll take you to moksha, I'll do this, nothing of these big stuff. They say that first of all you get your realization. Any other question, please? Uh, can you give us some evidence of your early enlightenment? <laughs> can you give some evidence of your own enlightenment? <laughs> <laughs> what evidence you want? What evidence you understand? You see, the evidence is if your Kundalini is awakened, then only you will understand. What Christ could not give evidence, so you crucified him nicely. But I am going to give you the evidence. You the evidence. I will give you. You sit down, you get your realization, then you will get the evidence. All right? Once you get your realization, you will get the evidence, isn't it? What is the evidence that the candle is enlightened? That it, when you take it near and unled, unled, uh, supposing this is an enlightened candle, the evidence is that it can enlighten another candle, isn't it? That is the evidence. Now you sit down first, you see, let's see if you get realization. That's the evidence, all right? If you don't get the realization, then the evidence is that something wrong with you, because many will get it. <laughs> it's you who have to give me the evidence, not me. Because I don't have... You see, these questions are all right for a person who is taking money from or taking anything from or I'm telling you anything, nothing. I'm just saying you take it. These questions are just the other way around. Should be, isn't it? It is you who has to give the evidence that you have got it, not me. Here at least there are sixty percent people who have got it. Sixty percent people. So if you get it, that's thank your stars that you've got it. If you don't get it, I'll have to work hard with you. Why don't we all ask for it now? Just slip your shoes off and put your hands on your lap, put your hands out and ask for it. Ask for it in